Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and our ongoing study in the book of Galatians by the Apostle Paul. We're going to wrap up chapter 4. We're going to take a look at 425 through 28. And uh, it is the sanctification chapter. So this will be our, uh, we will wrap up chapter 4, and next lesson we will pick up on uh, the beginning of chapter 5. Let's go to block 1 and take a look at the text. Now, Hagar stands for Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to the present city of Jerusalem because she is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem that is above is free, and she is our mother. For it is written, Be glad, barren woman, you who never bore a child. Shout for joy and cry aloud, you who are never in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband. Now you brothers and sisters, like Isaac, are children of promise. Are children of promise. Okay, Paul continues his allegorical interpretation. Let's go to block two and take a look at uh, Martin Luther. Abraham's two sons represent the two testaments. The Arabians called Mount Sinai Agar, perhaps inspiring Paul's allegorical interpretation. The law offered conditional promise. Paul calls the um, earthly Jerusalem part of Hagar. The temple was the home of the law. Sarah represents the spiritual Jerusalem, the church. Remember, uh, Luther posited replacement theology. In Philippians 3.20 we read, our conversation is in heaven, meaning in the spirit. In Ephesians 1.5, with blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Paul quotes from Isaiah 54.1, The barren woman shall have an abundance of children. They are the children of promise. Very true. He wraps up, Paul wraps up his allegory by calling all Christians the uh, children of promise. Let's take a look at R.C. Sproul. Okay, R.C. Sproul. Sarah gave birth to the children of promise. Heaven gave birth to the family of God. Paul cites Isaiah 54, 1. Christians are children of promise, receiving God's promises through Christ. And that's the truth. I mean, uh, I agree with uh, Luther and uh, Sproul interpreting Paul here. And, uh, you know, I dedicated my whole adult studies to the study of Jürgen Moltmann. And Jürgen Moltmann's theology is, was, and remains a theology of promise and hope. He developed a theology of hope in 1965. It was published in English in 1967. But, uh, and then he built his whole theological career around a theology of hope and promise. So very much in tune with what Paul is saying here. Let's go look at the Greek text. And uh, we look at 425. We read, Hagar is Sinai. Corresponding, Sustoikeo, corresponding to the present day Jerusalem. Corresponding is Sustoikeo. But the spiritual Jerusalem in heavenly places is free and out of our free mother. And out of our free mother, meaning Sarah, meaning Isaac, meaning spiritual children of promise. And then 427, um, referring to Isaiah. Gegrapti, it is written, rejoice, because many are the children of the desolate woman. Many are the children of the desolate woman. And uh, Paul wraps up the Greek in 428 with a 
Now, you are Tecna Ipangalia. You are Tecna Ipangalia, children of promise. Tecna Ipangalia. You are de este Tecna Ipangalia. You are children of promise. So, the allegory of the uh, children of Abraham, an allegorical interpretation provided by Paul, uh, is all centered around uh, maybe taking a hint from uh, the Arabians that call Sinai Agar, because Paul says, Hagar is Sinai. Her children are the children of the law, the children enslaved to the law. Sarah, Isaac, is the child of promise and therefore the offspring, the spiritual offspring of Abraham. The spiritual offspring are children of promise. That means all Christians who are spiritual children of Abraham and spiritual children of promise. We are children of promise. It's a very powerful Greek. Uh, it's an allegory that uh, Paul says it kind of points to Jerusalem today. He says, you know, really, and this is an ex-Pharisee talking, but he goes, you know, really, uh, as a Pharisee, I was enslaved to the law. Paul says, as a Pharisee, I was enslaved to the law. And so he calls the uh, present-day earthly Jerusalem. He says, it's really, the temple is uh, the house of the law, not the living God, but it's the house of the law, and we are enslaved to the law. We are enslaved to ritual practices, to the feast days, to uh, uh, basically... Uh, making sacrifices for temporary uh, redemption. But Paul says, through Christ, we have eternal redemption because through Christ and through faith in Christ, we are children of promise. Let's go to block one and we'll do a quick recap here. And uh, I just want to read the uh, verse 27 because it's from Isaiah. So let's just read what Isaiah said, okay? It's uh, Isaiah 54.1 that Paul quotes. Be glad, barren woman, Sarah. You who never bore a child, shout for joy and cry aloud. You who were never in labor because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband. Now you, brothers and sisters, like Isaac, are children of promise. So Paul goes to the prophet Isaiah, or Isaiah, however you want to pronounce it. He goes to the prophet, and he says, uh, the interpretation I'm giving was prophetically given by uh, Isaiah, and we are children of promise because we are Heirs through Christ. Heirs of the inheritance through Christ. We are children of promise. Now in block two for recap, uh, let's take a look at the very, um, well, no, let's, let's, let's go to Martin Luther because I like his reference to the Arabians. I think it's pretty important. Abraham's two sons represent the two testaments. The Arabians called Mount Sinai Agar perhaps inspiring Paul's allegory. I think that's a very possible occurrence. I didn't know that they called Mount Sinai Agar. And Paul says it's Hagar. Mount Sinai is Hagar. So maybe he picked that up and got inspired by that uh, Arabian name. The law offered conditional promise. Paul called the earthly Jerusalem part of Hagar. The temple was the home of the law. Sarah represents the spiritual Jerusalem. And Luther did stand for replacement theology. 
he always uh, talked about the new Israel, the new Jerusalem, the church. So uh, I want to take that from uh, block two for recap. And then in the Greek, uh, probably 425 and 428. 425 is important because we get the equation. Hagar esteen Sinai. Hagar is Sinai. Sustoikeo, corresponding, Sustoikeo, corresponding to present day Jerusalem. So, Jerusalem is enslaved to the law, says Paul. But he says in 428, now you, as believers in Christ, you who have faith in Christ, you are de este tecna epangelia. De este tecna epangelia. You are children of promise. You are children of promise. I think it's a very good uh, conclusion to chapter 4. And remember, all of this is centered on, uh, remember, chapter 3 was justification by faith in Christ. Chapter 4 is the process of sanctification. I mean, Galatians is uh, basically a Paul's gospel. It's the first book of the New Testament. If you look at the books of the New Testament in chronological order, Galatians is first. It's Paul's gospel. It's Paul's theological gospel. Chapter 4 is all about sanctification. And uh, so Paul basically says, I mean, you can just go to the last line. We are sanctified through the promise of God in Christ. We are sanctified passively. Remember, he always, he always emphasizes passive voice. Paul always does that because he knew that he had no merit on his own. He was the least of the apostles. He was ashamed of his past. He murdered Stephen. And he always uses the passive voice frequently because we are justified by grace through faith in Christ alone. And we are sanctified also by grace through faith in Christ alone. That is what Paul taught. That is what Martin Luther taught again during the Reformation after discovering Romans chapter 1, specifically Romans 1.17 the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, from the faith of Christ to the gift of our faith in Christ. The righteous shall live by faith. The righteous shall live by faith. And I'm going to wrap it up right there because that's what uh, I believe. I believe that uh, my righteousness is received as a gift of grace through faith. I do believe Romans 1.17 with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my conviction, with all of my motivation. The righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. The righteous shall live by faith. That's going to wrap up uh, chapter 4. We begin chapter 5 next time. In chapter 5, we get into the uh, practical Christian life. So we, chapter 3 was all about justification Chapter 4 was all about sanctification. Chapter 5, we get into practical Christian living. It's still going to be a the theology because Paul, this is a theological book, but it is uh, going to be on Christian life. That's going to wrap up uh, 425 through 28. Next lesson, we'll pick up with uh, the first four verses in chapter 5.